Welcome back. It's been a little while since the last video. I think it's been just over a month or so. As you can imagine, I've been doing lots of resting, recovering, healing. So this video is just a little bit of an update on where I'm at now. Um, what I found difficult, what I found easy, what I've enjoyed, what I haven't um, during this period of, of healing. Lessons that I've learned with the hope that you guys might be able to learn something from them, especially if you're going through something similar to what I am now. So if it only helps one person, it's all been worthwhile. So let's start off with how this month has gone since I've been home. Um, just over a month, about six weeks. As you can imagine, we've had times where it's been extremely difficult, um, but I've also had times that I've really enjoyed. Initially, the first, I'd say, couple of weeks, it was very up and down, emotions were running high, there was lots of unknowns, uncertainty, it was sleepless nights, lots of pain, the chemicals from all the drugs. So there was a mix of things going through my head and I was finding it very difficult to see clearly. One thing that helped me during this time was trying to communicate what I was feeling as much as possible. Once it's outside your head, you get a different perspective and sometimes you can see more clearly. But it was very dark and it was very difficult to shape the feelings that I was feeling. But I knew this was gonna be a normal part of the process. Expectedly, I will be feeling as I'm feeling because it was a huge surgery I had. Um, and at that moment in time, what the future held, it was very difficult to see. After that second week, I made sure to try and get back into some kind of routine. So especially in the morning, meditating, reading and journaling, just to start to control all the things that I can control. And that's probably one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give is to control as many things as you can, especially when you're going through times of uncertainty with lots of unknowns. Another thing to try and avoid is being the victim. Easier said than done, but it's gonna stand you in good stead if you change your mindset, your perspective on the events that are happening to you. Because if you do go down that rabbit hole of being the victim, it opens a can of worms that is extremely difficult to close. And I experienced that in probably the first couple of weeks when I was having those dark times. A simple shift, especially in appreciation, gratitude, and that perspective shift of what can I get out of this opportunity that I wouldn't normally get. Again, that can be difficult, especially when you're in pain, your whole life's kind of been turned upside down, you're not doing your normal routine. It's very easy to open up that kind of worms, but changing that perspective and thinking, okay, what gift can I get? What have I been presented with that I can make the most out of? Not just for me, but the people immediately around you. And if it's something that you wish, people further afield. And that's what I really want to try and do from this, is yes, come out of this a better person, which I already think I am, and we're only two months into the journey. But I wanna be a better person and show up better for my loved ones, my patients back at the practice when I go there, and anyone else that I come in contact with. So this pause that the universe has forced upon me, but when I say forced, this is gonna be another video, I believe that this has been coming for a long time. I've avoided telltale signs, I haven't changed my behaviours, my actions, which have led to this now. And that goes on to the next video that I'm gonna do, that just because someone looks healthy, physically, doesn't mean they're healthy internally, whether that be spiritually and emotionally. And I believe that emotional stress have played a huge part in where I'm at now. And then I've, as I've grown up and matured as an adult, particularly my mid twenties, lots of my behaviors and actions were not aligned with my values. So there was a lack of integrity, which was causing havoc within, within myself. And it presented itself physically. 2013, when I had the tumour the first time, relatively small surgery was, was fairly minor compared to what I've had recently. I was back on my feet, back at work within six weeks. It came back again between 2016 to 2018 with the surgery being 2018. And that year of 2018, emotionally, was very difficult for me. I felt very disconnected. I felt very lost. There were childhood traumas that were starting to come to the surface. And I don't think it's a coincidence that then 2018, the tumour came back to say, OK, you need to change what you're doing. Here's a wake up call. Here's a fire alarm. Listen to it. 
I probably didn't listen to it soon enough because here we are again. I didn't manage to avoid this big surgery. However, I believe that this surgery is a new start. It's a solid foundation. I have now a piece of titanium in my pelvis, so it should be pretty solid. But again, there's no coincidence that a tumour in my pelvis, where this first energy system or the chakra is, so the ground in the foundation, I've never really had that. Some might say coincidence, some might not. I believe that's why the tumour was in this pelvis. And it's linked to, like I say, lots of things that has happened in my, in my past. But right now I almost feel like I am being reborn, which is a great thing to experience. Because I'm only 35, I'm young. I've got lots to learn still. But even in this two, three month period and the period of time leading up until the surgery, I have learned so much. I've done lots of work on myself. It's not easy. Sometimes it's very uncomfortable. But the rewards far outweigh the uncomfortableness, if that's a word, you feel when you are doing that work. And I might have mentioned before on some of my posts or some of the other videos that working with a therapist has been extremely helpful and has opened up lots of doors, lots of avenues that were firmly closed before. Just helping with increasing self-awareness is one of the main things. Verbalising what's going on in here to someone that you trust, which is a safe space with no judgment, the things that you can un unlock, your gifts, your power, your strengths, I can't stress enough how much therapy has helped me. And it's not just that therapy is gonna fix everything, that's therapy with eating well, sleeping well, meditating, journaling, reading, exercising. It's lots of things that contribute to health. One of the main lessons that I have learned so far, and it's probably at the moment, one of the most important lessons that's gonna stay with me forever, and I truly believe that it's gonna change my life, is being present and being truly conscious. And that's a word that we hear a lot being thrown around on social media, the spiritual space, personal development space. And sometimes I don't think it's given, it probably is given the respect deserved from the people saying it, but I think the people receiving it, me included for a long time, probably up until this past two, three months, never really grasped or understood the power of being truly present in the moment you are in right this second. Because everything that we do, whether it be past or future, is made within this moment right now. So right now, this moment, I'm talking to you, I am truly conscious, I'm putting everything into this moment because this moment is all that I have right now. And when you're listening to this, hopefully it's exciting enough that you are giving 100% your attention and digesting everything that I'm saying. Depending where whereabouts this is in the video, you probably skip past it. But anyway, this period of time, I've been forced to be present. When you're stuck, sat in a chair, not being able to do the things that you normally do, and on reflection, I'm the kind of person that does a lot all the time to keep myself busy, because I think I've been avoiding doing this deep work and being present, truly present, with what's in here and working through what I need to work through to be a better person. So what does being present mean? It means having all your awareness at what is going on at that moment in time in front of you. But it's more than that. It's having an awareness that you aren't your thoughts, that you have control over your thoughts, and simply by identifying that your thought processes aren't your identity, and they don't define you, that is where the space of true presence or consciousness is. And in that space, you have the ability to just be. And when you feel it, you know it. When you're in that space of pure presence or consciousness, I feel light, I feel extremely happy, I feel joy, I feel acceptance, I feel love for myself and everything around me. And I just feel a sense of peace and ease. And that's something that I haven't felt, probably truly, for my whole life. That's why there was a resistance for me to be present, because it felt so foreign to me that I would be present for a moment or two, but then my mind would start thinking, the thought process would kick in, and that would be me doing again rather than being, particularly thinking about the future. I recently did a post about small wins. 
Small wins are extremely important at the best of times, but when they're the only thing that's available to you, they are worth their weight in gold, which probably isn't that much if it's a small win, but you get my message, you get the drift. So a small win has an accumulative effect, and it's the accumulative effect of this small win that has the huge impact. And I'm gonna go back to physical side of things. So the small wins for me are, initially it was 10 steps, 20 steps, 400 steps. Now I'm on about two to 3,000 steps a day, which compared to my normal step count is small, but at this moment in time, it's huge. But these small wins have an overflowing effect to everything else going on in my life. So that two to three weeks that I found very difficult, and at times it was very dark, a big black cloud over my head, I could not see past that. As soon as I shifted my perspective, and I only started initially reading five pages, meditated for 10 minutes. Right there is two small wins. That then gave me the motivation to want to do something else. So actually I'm going to read some more pages or I'm going to go for a bit longer of a walk or I'm going to learn something else. Insert whatever an action makes you do. It's important to note that it's action that breeds motivation because motivation comes and goes. You run out of motivation. Even the most motivated person in the whole world runs out of motivation, but it's small action and it's that consistent small action that then carries you through and gives you that momentum. So small wins, extremely important, especially when you are going through a healing process, something that changes your life, but just make the most of this time as much as you can. Shift your perspective, feel what you need to feel. By no means am I saying ignore those dark days or the times you're feeling rubbish. It's very important that you feel that you can't dwell on it. It sounds easy when I'm saying it to the camera, but please believe me when I say this, that I have experienced those dark days. Many times, this surgery, 2018, being diagnosed with diabetes, lots of other things. So when I'm saying this to you, it is coming from the most sincere, authentic place. You can't dwell in those dark days, because if you do, it gets dark very, very quickly. And before you know it, it's a week, it's two weeks, it's three weeks. So how do you get out of that darkness? Which is a great question, and it's a question that I hope you're asking. It's about having routines and structures in place that anchor you and pull you out of that darkness. And that is gonna be different for everyone. With me, it's my therapy, it's talking to loved ones, it's meditating, it's reading, it's exercising when I can, which has been extremely difficult for me because lifting weights, resistance training, cycling was a huge outlet. Um, not just physically, but spiritually. When you're in that place lifting weights or cycling, you are completely present in that moment. So you might not feel like doing those things when you're having those bad days or those dark days, but more often than not, if you've been doing them at the times that you're feeling great, it's enough to pull you out of that darkness or that shadow. And you don't have to sit there and meditate for an hour. Sometimes just starting the process is enough. One, because then you're concentrating on something else and then you forget about what you've been thinking about for the past two, three, four days on that, that loop of negativity. So just that moment, that space is enough to create change, especially with your thought processes, to then pull you out of it. Because there's going to be ups and downs, even if you aren't going through something serious or you're not recovering from a surgery or any other health issues, life is full of ups and downs. You need to ride the waves, basically, but have an awareness when you are on a downward wave that one, it doesn't last, it will pass, and it will pass quicker if you have healthy habits in place, particularly ones that influence your mindset for the better. So a bit about my walking. The first videos that you're gonna see are the early days, the first few steps in hospital, which were extremely difficult and no exaggeration, I thought I wasn't gonna be able to walk again. Um, but two months to the day, we have made huge progress. And I don't know why I say we, me and my leg. I have made huge progress. Um, it was steady, slow at the start. The first two, three weeks, probably month, um, it was really learning to walk again and getting used to my leg kind of hanging there. There was very little control. The incision had cut through quite a lot of muscles, particularly the, the glute area, the, the muscles that abduct the hip. So it was kind of very shaky 
when I was moving the foot and hip flexion, so bringing your knee, I can't really show you, but hip flexion, so bringing your knee up, has only really settled down the past couple of weeks because there was a lot of muscle spasm in that area because of the way the muscles were then moved to the side and stretched. So that's one of the most difficult things was bringing the knee up, which is important when you're walking because obviously it brings the hip and knee forward. So that's something that's taken a while to come back. Big improvement for the past 10 days or so since I've been doing the rehab um, and introducing small movements, but consistently, um, daily, just to work on coordination and activating muscles, particularly like my bum muscles. Um, and when it comes to the hip flexion, it's just working through that movement passively. So I've been using a towel to pull my knee up, but then also actively as well. But I found passive, passively doing it first and really focusing on that area of my body is helping. So engaging it, almost visualizing it while doing it and just before doing it has is, is helped a lot. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please do like and share. The purpose of these videos is to shed light on the healing process after going through a fairly big procedure. So if you do know anyone going through something similar, please do like and share. The purpose is just to help people. Even if it just helps one person, it's all worthwhile. If you're not going through something similar, I still hope these videos help. Because the topics that I am covering, yes, will be beneficial if you are going through something like this, but they will also help you in everyday life. Stay tuned for the next video. Please subscribe and I'll see you soon.